Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vormithrax and we're on episode 10 of our Let's Play for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. When we left off the last episode, we had uh, snuck over to the other side of town trying to get to the fire station, which uh, we unfortunately found has got some uh, turrets parked out in front of it at a roadblock position. Uh, so we snuck over into the electronics store and we're uh, looting in there when we came across a couple of zombies. At the moment, we're in a face down with a zombie dog just a few tiles away from us. He's going to be coming straight at us, and we've got to decide what to do. I also know somewhere else in the uh, building here with me, there's a boomer zombie, and uh, we'll have to figure out how to deal with him as well. So in the last episode towards the end we had found a wristwatch and I had initially been confused about why it wasn't displaying the time and it actually is. Uh, I just hadn't realized or recognized here that the uh, time frame had been set to military time which I don't usually do. I'm not sure why I set it that way but uh, now that I've got the option set back to the 24 hour time or the uh, normal time setting you can see it's just a couple minutes before midnight time wise. So we'll be able to see exactly what time it is and you'll also be able to watch that as I'm passing time or doing actions like unequipping and equipping weapons and armor you can actually see how much time passes during those actions so you'll get a, a little better feel for things so what are we gonna do well let's take a look at our inventory again uh, we've got the same problem we had before uh, it's a problem or not a problem uh, it's kind of a trade-off we're still fairly heavily encumbered I didn't make any adjustments to the uh, clothing and the armor that I'm wearing so the negative to that like I covered in the last episode is it does make our melee attacks a little tougher and our movement speed a little slower and so on but the better the good side of the problem is that uh, it does actually provide additional layers of protection so if we get hit by a zombie uh, we're better able to protect ourselves and to resist the infection so I think what I'm gonna do after thinking this through is I'm just gonna go into attack mode we're gonna try to get rid of this zombie dog as quickly as possible um, they're not terribly tough so it only should take a few solid hits to probably take the dog down um, they're not dangerous by themselves the issue is that they're pretty fast so if you're wounded and trying to run away they can chase you down and uh, tear you apart if you're out of stamina and so on. But with me fully strengthened and full stamina and ready to fight, it shouldn't pose too much of a problem. So let's get to it. As before, we're going to go ahead and start throwing sticks while he's at range. And that one missed. Zombie dog avoided the projectile. Missed again. And we'll go one more time, then we'll start with the Ugh, we missed, missed, missed. Well, that didn't work very well. And he bit our right leg. We're not infected. Now it's uh, time to do the spear poking maneuver. Turn off safe mode. We missed him, he missed us. Now, notice here, you wildly swing and miss. I blocked a little bit of damage with the knife spear. He hits our right leg, but the armor protects you. We blocked a little, and then he hit our left arm, but the armor protects you. He's getting multiple attacks while we're just getting one. He is a lot faster than we are with our current weapon and armor configuration. So hopefully we get a hit in pretty soon, or this could get bad pretty quick. Another miss from us. And he ripped something. Uh, our jeans just got ripped. And this is a really good demonstration of why this is a problem. We're in hand-to-hand -hand with a lot of negative modifiers against a fast enemy. Ugh. Starting not to like this. Oh, well, I guess good news. Our melee skill just went up one, but we just got hit in our left leg. You can see here we're starting to uh, take some damage we're going to have to start paying attention to. Still not infected. I really hope we get some hits in here soon. Okay, well we got a hit in. We hit him for 15 finally. Unfortunately, we've, I think, drawn the attention of the boomer zombie. We take a look. And he hasn't spotted us yet, so he's not aware of what's going on. And you can see the hit point bar here. We've got the dog at about half hit points. If I point at him, he's heavily injured. So a single hit of 15 put him into the heavily injured category. So if we can get one more solid hit in, it'll get rid of the dog and then we can turn our attention to the boomer. So let's just keep trying. Not a lot of options we have here or subtlety. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that boomer is now coming to us. 
Oh, we hit him again, but he didn't quite die. He's nearly dead now. Check the boomer. Yep, boomer's coming towards us now. Okay, well that helps us out quite a bit, so we managed to hit the dog again, and we killed it. We are still uninfected, so he managed to nip away at a number of our locations for hit points, and did a little bit of damage to one of our clothing items. But other than that, we're looking okay. You can see that the color has changed for items that have taken some damage. But other than that, not too bad. So now, we've got to figure out what we're going to do about this boomer zombie. I think I'm going to lure him back to the other end, the northeast corner of the building, and fight him up there, or kill him up that direction. Mainly because I want to get him away from this side of the building. This area over here, I don't know anything about. I think that's where it's most likely to have zombies that are going to come towards us. This is towards town. So I'm going to pull him back to an area I've already traversed through and that I think are clear of zombies, so when he blows up, the noise hopefully doesn't travel as far. And here's another problem. The boomer just spewed bile. We are now covered in bile. That's uh, affecting our sight range, as you can tell, as well as going to make us smell really bad. Not much we can do about it at the moment. I'm just going to keep moving. The bile will disappear, as it just did. Hopefully he doesn't get another spit attack on us. All right, we got out of his sight range. We could probably work our way around him, but I do actually want to get rid of him. So I'm going to step down towards him till I can see him. He's moving around, so well, let's just start throwing sticks at him. Grazing hit for one damage. Hit him for 11. And, of course, he covered us in bile before he went again, so... Let's retreat back north. Hopefully we can clear this bile off. And I want to try to kill him with the stick so we stay out of range of the explosion. Alright, and there we go. So, we just kept throwing sticks at him, finally got enough damage in to kill him. Hit him for 25 with that last one. We hear the boomer explode. Well, there's a clang noise, a thud, and it's okay to step in the purple bile once it's been spewed or once it's from the explosion. It won't actually affect you in any way. A wrench. Another awesome tool that I'm really happy to see. And we got our soldering iron. All right. So now the question is, did that explosion attract anything? Between the fighting we've already done and those turrets down south that have been uh, pulling in zombies from the local area, it might be pretty clear in this area. So the turrets and the noise they make would have done a pretty good job in uh, causing zombies to come towards them. Let me finish picking up the rest of these things. Bruised corpse of the zombie dog. We're going to smash that. Make sure he doesn't get up again. And then we'll finish looting the store. A cell phone with a 100 battery charge. Cell phone can also be used to uh, tell the time. So we've already got our watch, so I don't really need it for that. We'll pick it up. Most likely I'll just end up pulling the batteries out of it and uh, dropping it or tearing it apart for parts later. But we're going to pick up the rest of these items. A coffee maker and a flashlight. Thank goodness. The other good reason to come to an electronics store. So this place is just chock full of good things for us. I'm very, very happy with what we've been able to loot so far. Radio, I'm not going to have much use for that either, but again, it's got batteries power that we can take out. So, while we're here, I'm going to leave the random raw materials. Don't really need the screwdriver, but we will take the copper wire. Alright, anything else in sight? No. Okay, well, we got all of that pretty cleanly. Just took some uh, minor nibbles to our hit point locations, but otherwise we managed to clear the store. I haven't seen or heard any other zombies in the area, so we need to make some further plans. Let's take a look at our character screen and just double check to make sure we're aware of the various statuses. Everything's looking good. I'm aware of my torso problem with the encumbrance, 
At the moment, I'm willing to suffer that in order to get the additional protection and the additional carrying capacity. Um, we do still need to figure out something to do with our chilly hands and legs, and we're going to worry about that when we get back to our base. Other than that, we're looking pretty good. We're gaining some skills. Throwing's about halfway to level 2. We've gained some piercing weapon. Our melee went to level 1. And we've got a tiny amount in survival, and that's from when we were picking the bushes earlier uh, in one of the early episodes looking for some vegetables. Let's take a look at the map. So here's what we know. We've now looted out the electronics store. I'm going to go ahead and do Shift E on the map here to toggle it to explored status. So I know I don't need to come back here for any particular reason. The fire station we still need to get into if we manage to figure out a way of uh, disabling or disarming the roadblock sentries. I believe we can run them out of ammo if I can lure some zombies into their line of fire, but that's a pretty dangerous game to play during the daytime um, when they've got long sight ranges and they can hit me from a long way out. And I'm not sure I'm in a condition that I want to try anything with them this early in the game. We've got plenty of other things we can do in this town that I don't need to be playing uh, tag your it games with uh, automated sentries. So, I didn't uh, actually go circle the gun store. I could probably work my way around the far side to go take a look at it, and we might do that. These two subway stations won't be too useful. Sometimes the above ground portion has got a vending machine we might take a look at now that we've got some cash cards. We could possibly get some uh, water or drinks or uh, junk food out of those. Uh, other than that, liquor store, bank, liquor store, mm, grocery store, grocery store. That would be a good thing to try to get to. There's a particular reason why I would want to try and I might actually go try to peek in there before we head back home. I won't be coy about it. The reason I want to go to a grocery store is obviously it's going to have some food items, but another possibility is it's going to have a shopping cart that we can use to store even more loot. Basically you grab a shopping cart with a grab command and you can drag it around with you. And it acts as a mobile uh, storage thing, so you can hold a whole bunch more while you're out doing looting runs. Um, I have plans, if we don't find a shopping cart, to actually build something uh, back at our base now that we've got some tools, uh, but a shopping cart would be preferable. So we might do a little circle around and uh, see if we can get into that section as well. Um, other than that, this is... Eh, the only problem I have is that's almost dead center in the middle of this town area, and things can go wrong pretty quickly if we make enough noise to draw attention from the local zombies. Hmm, what do we got across the road? Got the garage, and another house that we haven't looked at. Wondering if we want to do the garage and the house, and then just work our way straight back to our evac shelter with all of the stuff that we've accumulated. Well, hmm. Let's take a peek at least. So we'll head out the front door. And we'll just, ah, we'll take a look at this vehicle while we're here. Now that we've got some tools, I can do what I was hoping to do earlier. So I'm hitting E to examine and then pointing towards the vehicle to bring up the vehicle screen. And I had shown in a previous episode that you can move the cursor around to the various locations on the vehicle uh, template here and I'm looking at what is in that location. So if I move down here to the seat areas, there's a seat belt that I'm going to try to take out there. That one's got one. Hmm, this is a police car, which you can tell here. A couple things I'm looking at. It says that it has enough wheels to operate. It has 7% gasoline, 7% battery. Everything's looking good up here. This might be a functional vehicle. Let's carefully check through here. So heavily damaged wheel. Have a pretty damaged engine. It may still start and operate. Um, might be some performance issues or problems getting it started when we really want it to, but the battery alternator are good. Everything's okay there. We've got to have a seat and we've got to have controls. Those are both in good condition. None of this stuff is critical. 
Vehicle tank is okay. Trunk. Uh, this is an operational vehicle. The only thing that's a potential problem is the engine. That's 6.5 liter V8 engines, fairly heavily damaged and could have some problems operating, but otherwise everything tells me this is a functioning vehicle. Well, that's great. I'm very happy to know about that. Um, I'm not going to take this thing apart or do anything to it. I'm going to... Uh, from the southeast you hear a bang, so something's wandered into range of the turrets again. I'm going to bring up the map, and it's right here on the road. We're going to put a note. Working police car. Huh. I'm going to hold off doing anything with that. I don't want to do anything in the nighttime. Um, we may come back here during the day, but I'm going to keep creeping around for the moment. That's great to find, though. I'm happy we located that. Just working my way across the street. All right. This is the exterior lever or winch that operates these doors. They're going to make a pretty loud noise when we try to open them. I'm going to work my way around the building. Usually a garage is going to have an exterior door on this side. Head in, close the door. Nothing in the lockers. And what kind of tool do we have? A standard hammer. It's got three hammering and one fine hammering quality. We'll go ahead and take that. Any tools we can get are a good thing. A drive belt is not going to be useful and another hammer. This Portable light frame, telescopic crane, and casters. Oh, it's an engine crane. Cool. Awesome. So we can do shift G to grab, push that direction, and we can pull the engine crane around with us. So I could modify this. It's got a set of casters. Let's examine it. So you can see here, it's a very simple vehicle or device. Got a foldable light frame, and then mounted to that frame is a telescopic crane, and then four inch casters or wheels on the bottom. So, this is pretty cool. I could either leave it as is, or I could pull the crane off and uh, put a basket on it and treat it like a shopping cart. A um, couple of different things I could do. Or I could leave it as a crane, because I will be doing some vehicle stuff later if we survive long enough. So, we've got a good empty garage here foldable crane. I think what I'll do is I'm going to bring this outside with me. I'm going to go put it right next to that police car. Another vehicle just to the south of us there. Where'd you go? Alright, there you are, police car. So I'm going to park it right here. I'm going to hit shift G again to let go of it. And I'll put it right next to the driver's door to remind me that it's there. Alright. Let's take a look. I'm going to zoom out. You can kind of get an idea of the range and distances. This is that lighted area where the uh, turret is, and it's been continuing to plink away at things over there. I'm going to detach the cursor and zoom over there real quick. I just want to look around. So there's a vehicle right there. All of these are parts that have been shot off the vehicle or smashed off by zombies, so metal, scrap metals, lumps of steel, and so on. I can't see the turret itself. I think it's right here or here. But that's fine. So, alright. We're far enough away from it. We shouldn't have to worry about it. Alright, so we've explored the garage. I'm going to mark it on the map as explored. And I'm going to duck down and check the, the car right below the garage. Then we're going to head back north and take a look at the, that other house. This is a wrecked vehicle, a Beetle, and I don't think there's going to be much we can do here. The seat belts are destroyed. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to pull much usable material off of here. Got a wheel or two, but we're not going to worry about it. So, we're going to go ahead and just head north. Alright, this is the house. There should be a front door. I don't think I've mentioned before, but when you're looking at a map and you see a house symbol, notice how 
the house symbols are all these arrows, but they point different directions. So on this side of the street, they're pointing this way, and on this side of the street, they're pointing to the west. Basically, the direction that the arrow is pointing tells you the front location of the house. And it makes sense that the front of the house is on the street. So all the houses on this side are pointing to the east or pointing to the street side, and this one is pointing to the west, also to the street. So. That's useful information when you're approaching buildings and especially in the dark so you know where to go to find the entrances. Let's try the front door. Front door is locked. We're going to examine it and we failed the prying of the door. We'll try again and we got it. Close it behind us and start taking a look around. All right. Tin, clam <laughs> Tin can of clam chowder. Hydrogen peroxide, another good medical item. Some chairs, we're gonna pick up that long string as I always do. And what do we got? Got a teapot, seasoning, a jar of sauerkraut, and another long string. Go ahead and grab all that. Teapot's got one boiling quality, but we've got a pot and frying pan at the base already or in our Stockpile, so I'm not going to worry about that. We'll go ahead and take the beer. Check this door behind here. Thriller novel is not something I'm concerned about. We'll close the window as we explore. Pretty sure that's just a blanket. Blanket and a pillow. And what do we have in here? Sewing kit. Alright, another fantastic find. So the sewing kit, as it notes here, this is a plastic kit with a variety of needles, some plastic spools for thread, and a few other useful textile tools. Using a sewing kit on an article of clothing to attempt to repair or reinforce that clothing. This uses your tailoring skill. So, it's an awesome find. It's got 50 charges of thread already built into it. It can hold a maximum of 200 charges. And this is what we're going to be using to do tailoring. We can create clothing, repair clothing, and reinforce it, which basically adds another hit point to the clothing, so it's harder to destroy. I've got stairs down into a basement. We'll check that in a moment. More hydrogen peroxide. Great. Can't ever have too much of that. And there is something here other than the water. A pair of contact lenses. I'm going to take those. I believe you can use those for certain manufactured items. I can't remember what exactly, but I remember they have some kind of use, and I've wanted them in the past and not had them. Let's check this out. Actually, let's go up and close these windows and then check that out. All right. Basement. What kind did we get? Another marijuana growing facility? Or what is natured alcohol? That has uses. We can use that if we build a stove kit and nothing else. So just a big empty basement with some alcohol. Alright, not terrible. Okay, so we've got these rooms explored. And just a standard pair of boots and nothing else. All right, well, we got a sewing kit and a few other minor items out of this house. That's all there is here. We'll bring up the map, declare this one explored. So you can see they're all dark gray on that side now. All right, I left the stockpile of items from previously up here. What I think I might do, what time is it? It's uh, 1.23 a.m. We're not sleepy yet, and we're doing okay with food and water. Oh, we are getting tired, so we are starting to get sleepy. I need to start making sure that I've got the materials and uh, everything created and ready to go for when we need to put our guy to sleep. So, what I'm going to do is check my inventory. How much volume do we have available here? We've got 16 out of 24, so we can carry a few more things. Let's see... I would love to just go start the car up and drive it home, but we've got shocker zombies hanging out here near the power substation. They could ruin our day pretty quickly, so I'd rather avoid that if possible. Um, I think I might just make a quick run straight home from here, unload our current inventory, and then make a run back and grab that other stockpile. Then we'll kind of nest at the base and get some building and... Uh, crafting done before we settle our guy down for his first night. So, let's go ahead and go outside. 
we're basically just going to hit the edge of the building and work our way pretty much nearly due west. I'm going to go ahead and turn on safe mode and then just fast move. Anything that gets in sight will immediately stop us moving. We're almost home already. And black rat I am not concerned about. Alright, there it is. Okay, we made it home. Let's move up to here and we'll bring up the advanced inventory and I'll do some quick sorting. Uh, I'm gonna do... When you have a big thing like this, it's showing everything around me, so all of my piles of stuff. I'm actually going to change up how I've got things listed here. I'm gonna make this side my inventory that I'm carrying and on this side I'll pick what location I want to drop things into. So currently, if I pick number five, I can tell from the items of items here that this is my tool pile. So that's fine. Switch back to here, and I'm going to use the S key to sort, and you can pick what you want to sort by. And I'm going to sort by category. This makes things a little easier, because now I can see all the things that the game considers the tools category, and I'm gonna, I got it on my tools page over here, so I'm just going to arrow down to my tools category and the cash cards don't weigh anything that's fine we're gonna drop the coffee maker drop the hammer mp3 player radio we're gonna keep the screwdriver set with us drop the sewing kit soldering iron all of that's gonna get dropped actually we should probably keep the wrench with us for now certain tools you want to take with you if you have any idea that you might be taking apart vehicles or doing any kind of disassembly. Um, you need certain things like the screwdriver set, a wrench, a hammer, things like that. So we'll keep a hold of a few of those things. Actually, I'll pick that hammer back up. All right. So we're going to keep the rest of this. We'll switch to this side over to my food pile, which is right there, and drop a number of these things. All right. And then we'll switch over here to our raw materials pile. That's going to be most of this stuff. Alright, we're down to 9.8 out of 24. Let's find anything else we can drop. Um, I'm going to go ahead... I'm also looking at the volume column here to kind of make some decisions. I pro I don't need to be carrying around all this hydrogen peroxide, so I'm actually going to make a new pile. We're going to use... Oops. Inventory. Switch to here. We're going to use that space for medical items. So I'm going to go ahead and drop things over there. We'll drop those. The hydrogen peroxide. And the rest of the things I like to keep with me. We don't need the contacts. And... Yeah. Drop the alcohol. Drop the plastic bottle there. Alright, I'm just trying to make as much space as I can, so... Alright. Let's make a quick run back over there then. It was pretty clear. I'm going to turn the safe mode back on. Hello, vehicle that I haven't seen before. Right on that corner of that street. Let's take a look at this. Looking like it's in pretty good shape. So it's a hippie van. It does have enough wheels. It's got gas and a battery. Everything looks pretty good up here. Engine showing is faulty. So let's do a little more specific checking here. Right there. Similar to the other engines in red condition so it may or may not start. But what I do like is all of these seat belts. I'm gonna go ahead and press the O key to remove. We're gonna pick the seat belt and notice we've now meet, met the requirements. We've got the tool with screw driving and we've got strength one and mechanics one skill. This is gonna take six minutes of game time but the seatbelt has been removed. And I'm not planning on driving this vehicle, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the seatbelts from a number of places. 
How many do we have? Lots of them. Great. I am happy to see that. An aisle, an aisle. Another seat belt to remove. And I think that's all I'm going to worry about for now. The seat belts are the critical find. Those we can disassemble into short ropes, ropes, and threads, and so on. So, yep, short ropes. That's what they turn into when you remove them from the car. Alright, great. Back to our map here, and... I don't need to pick anything up there. I'm going to not worry about the caster's item. But let's just head up to that other house. I'm a little closer to the power substation than I'm comfortable with. So far, it's been pretty quiet in the neighborhood, so that's a good thing. Alright, should be just north of us here. Oops, alright, we got something in the area from the northwest. You hear a crash. So something out in the street over here is banging on a car. I think we had that same thing earlier. Yep. There's the little footprint indication, and there's a vehicle, so something is banging on a car over there. We're going to avoid it. And go to the back side of the house where I had that window open. And there's all the items. So let's go to advanced inventory, switch that back to all. We'll put our personal inventory on this side. And I'm just going to use that single key to pick everything up. And we've got it all. How much space do we have left? We are almost completely full, so I'm not going to bother trying to grab anything else. Alright, it's now 3.20 in the morning, so as you can see as I'm moving and picking things up and crafting, time is moving. I want to get back before dawn, uh, before the sun comes up. So this will be our last trip out in the evening, so we'll just keep moving here. Let's make sure I still have safe mode on. Alright, we just need to go south of the house, and then straight over. Almost home. And you can see the messages down here, your hand feels like ice. This is not a good thing. <laughs> and up here, very cold. And it's almost 4 a.m., so... There we go, back home. Step back into our position here, go back to inventory, make that our personal inventory, and over here we're going to go to our raw material pile first. We'll sort this again by category, and start dropping some spare parts here. All of that can go in there. Next up we'll go to our food pile, which is on that side. I'm going to go ahead and drop everything in the food category, and we'll figure out later what we want to pick up again. Alright, and our tools pile. Keeping the crowbar, keeping the flashlight. Don't need the poncho. We're going to keep the hammer, the pocket knife, screwdriver set, and wrench. Alright, let's move over on this side, and in our clothing pile, I'm just going to tell it to drop the towel poncho, and those items. And how are we looking? All of these are things I plan to keep in my inventory and move around with me. Got my throwing sticks and the Beretta. And aspirin for if our pain gets extreme. Bandages if we start bleeding. And the disinfectant if we get infected. Go along with our clothing. Alright, that's all set. Funnily enough, our fire is still going. There's reasons for that. Normally it doesn't last that long, but uh, when you're outside of a range of an area, time doesn't pass, essentially, so it got put in limbo until we got back to the fort. Well, I'm going to put a break in right here. Gone on a little longer than I intended, and uh, next episode we're going to be doing some base management, get things ready. Oh, and the fire just went out. Uh, we'll get things ready for sleeping. Our guy is thirsty and tired, so we need to turn our attention to the needs of our character and uh, get him some food and water, get a bed prepared, and uh, get them to sleep so we can wake up refreshed and fight some more zombies. So, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, too, please hit the like uh, button down below and uh, subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more coming, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a good day. Bye-bye.